just with support here. Hard to believe, 10 years ago, I started posting movie reviews on my YouTube channel, which is my second YouTube channel, because my first YouTube channel has been in long suspension since 2007, and since then, I started uh, posting all my videos back up and ready at various channels, including Daily Motion. I'm no longer on those channels. So I finally went back to YouTube uh, starting on May of 2012, like a couple days you know, back. And at the time, I was at Inclusion Films, which was a film workshop um, that's uh, run by actor Joey Travolta, you know, John Travolta's older brother. Um, still runs it today, <laughs> but it's all the way up at Bakersfield, as we know it, uh, because it used to be in Burbank, California, and, and that's where I went since 2011. I started joining in with all the adults around, the students that I eventually became friends with, half of which have been related to um, other um, film crews, you know, even actors, actresses, um, directors, producers, visual effects artists, they're related to. I'm, I'm surprised that, <laughs> what do you know? I, I made a lot of people around. And I, I also bumped into some old high school friends um, that started to join in too, so it's really interesting. Had the best experience of my life, having to join in, you know, do some short films, um, you know, shows, and other programs, and also we get to work on on the camera and all the lighting, even work on stages and sets and location everywhere. It's like like being in a uh, you know being in Hollywood. You know, doing all these um, filming sets. I mean, this is a learning experience that we had to do. That was fun. And I was living at that uh, one apartment in Glendale, California. Yeah, I had my own room that um, is kind of small, but I had everything that I need. Um, had all the movies uh, that I bought on physical media, which is DVD, VHS, and Blu-rays. Yeah, before 4K came along, which I now got them recently. <laughs> well, since I moved to this place uh, later, later on. Yeah, yeah, which I, I started getting them when, like, ever, ever since last year, and or even in 2019. But okay, well anyway. But um, I started this channel because I wanted to go back to doing what I usually do. And I thought it would be really cool to do movie reviews because, you know, I am a movie buff. You know, I have a passion for movies. I love TV shows too and other entertainment stuff. And so it's always cool and have fun to do something different for a change. And then I could start posting some random videos that I posted on my old channels and even put some new videos to join in to make this channel even better and hopefully get more subs this way so everybody will join in and they'll be able to watch it anytime I mean it's, it's fun but for 10 years though <laughs> it, it you know whenever I have some time you know I would just post some reviews of any movie that I've watched recently I mean even if I had direct TV which I did you know, I would actually switch on to other channels to watch uh, a very special movie. I do go out to see a movie at my local theater. Like whatever new movie that comes out, I I check it out and I'll review it right away. Um, and of course, I would buy a movie on any format to choose and I would end up reviewing it right away. And of course, nowadays I do have a streaming device with uh, Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K and a Roku TV to watch all these streaming apps and all of any movie that's available. 
But of course, no doubt about it, I would always collect physical media to watch whatever movie I have, uh, whatever is new or old. But at least you'll get the best quality of any kind, or sometimes maybe not the best out of both worlds, but that's okay. At least I have them all. <laughs> okay. So it's always fun. And I. And, um. Yep, how you love my intro so far. I mean, I just worked on two of them by far. So this is going to be used currently uh, with the uh, celebrating its 10th anniversary of movie reviews that I've been doing. And the second intro will be used um, within the, um, the next uh, few months, like possibly uh, next year, which will be... Uh, 2023 so when I start doing more reviews I mean this will be perfect so it's really fun my first movie review on my second YouTube channel as currently and I know I have my BitChute channel as well to join in so at least now I have both channels to have in mind my BitChute channel is in my background okay. was uh, hard to believe a friend that's on YouTube who's now doing movies um, on his own uh, but his first review that I I've, I've done for, for me or for him <laughs> so, but the first movie that I reviewed for him was uh, Haunted High um, also known as Ghostquake it's on DVD you can still get it I, I believe it's on streaming too uh, it would be nice to have it on Blu-ray, though, and 4K, for that matter. Um, but that, that movie was on Sci-Fi Channel. It had Danny Trio from Machete and other Robert Rodriguez films that he's done. He's done a lot of movies. And uh, it, had Chris, it has uh, Christina Carpenter in there from Baywatch and Buffy, Vampire Slayer. And um, it even had that one actor who was in the Mighty Ducks. Um, what do you know? <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, it was a decent flick uh, when it came out. Um, I like it. It's not perfect, but it was interesting for a horror film. You know, where it's supposed to be... Um, I guess in some ways it's supposed to be a high school, but it just feels more like um, like a university because it was set in, at a university anyway. So it kind of makes sense here. Until suddenly there's like an earthquake and then all this ghost was coming around. That's... Oh, oh okay. <laughs> now that popped me into my mind. Uh, MC Gainley, that's... He plays the ghost in the movie, yeah. yeah he's on the Mighty Ducks. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm trying trying to think out of my mind right away. <laughs> as quickly as possible. Okay. But enough of that. I'm going to do a brand new movie review with the start of the new intro. Um, this movie came out a few weeks ago. Um, it's available on Prime Video. If you have... Um, the Fire TV Stick, especially the 4K one for Amazon, or if you don't have that, but you have Roku or any other streaming devices, and if you sign up for that, you'll be able to watch the movie. Um, in fact, you can watch it for free at this point. <laughs> the latest movie with Sylvester Stallone called Samaritan. Yep, it's a superhero movie. That's not MCU nor DCEU. No, this is its own thing. It's it's released by MGM, yeah, the studio that gave us the Rocky movies. <laughs> um, but it is directed by Julius uh, Avery, who did the movie Overlord, uh, which is a pretty overlooked uh, action horror movie in some ways. Um, it's basically um, based on a uh, 
a graphic uh, comic book that came out in 2014. It was previously adapted at the time, but it has been a long awaited because it had sat on the shelf for like just um, a year or so because of, as we all know, the pandemic. So they weren't so sure if they were going to release this movie in theaters or they're just going to have it simply be available on streaming. And now that um, Amazon just bought MGM, yeah, this would be perfect for it. So now we get to see all their movies that they produce. But I hope they, they'll start uh, releasing movies in theaters as well and then put them on physical media you know, since they signed up for... Universal and Warner Brothers under uh, SDS, uh, Studio Distribution Services, to provide you know, the MGM library to put them in, especially the current movies that they put out. Um, so it's also uh, being co-produced with Amazon Studios, um, and I know United Artists releasing is a distributor too, so. They had a helping hand. <laughs> um, it's interesting too because um, it's been a while since I've seen a movie that Stallone has been doing. I mean, yeah, he did have um, Rocky uh, IV being revived as a ultimate cut, so yeah, there's a new director's cut of that. And they probably had some differences here and there, and it's updated for its new generation so at least now you can finally have the courage to add everything back again yeah, I, I haven't seen his ultimate cut version but I mean I, I love Rocky 4 and I love all the Rocky films except the fifth one um, and I don't mind Creed the second one's okay but still so it's really nice to see uh, Stallone back in action. I mean, considering that he's 76 years old, he's very old, hard to believe. But hey, he's still strong as ever. But hey, you know, Eastwood is already in his old age, and he can still, you know, direct and star in a movie on his own in this decade. So hey, it's nice. And I think it's really interesting to see Stallone, you know, do a superhero movie. I guess in some ways it kind of has uh, sort of like all these other dark superhero films we've seen before. I, I guess in some ways it's kind of like um, the other movie that Will Smith did uh, called uh, Hancock. And I think uh, there was also another um, dark superhero movie that, that was rather similar to, if I could think about it right now. Yeah, I'm sorry, just, <laughs> I know my mouth's like moving a little bit too, it's just, I'm just making sure my nose don't, don't sniffle too much. <laughs> um, I'll look it up, um, but it's, it's rather similar to that story. Um, and it's PG-13, it's not R-rated, so I know there's going to be some changes here and there. I would imagine how this is going to turn out. But, here we go. Let's start our review, so we don't want to take too long for everything. So our Sylvester Stallone, uh, Javon Wanda Walton, Pilou as back, Dasha Polanco, uh, Moises Arias, Martin Starr, Sophia Tanum, Jared Oderick, Michael Aaron Mulligan, Henry G. Sanders, and Shamek Moore. It's based on the, the graphic comic by uh, Brad G. F. Schlott, Mark Olivant, and Renzo Podesta. Um, it's written by Brad G. F. Schlott and it's directed by Julius Avery. The movie began set in a dark, gritty, and rather poor Granite City, where they had a higher crime rate, homeless is on the horizon, where everyone remains jobless, 
which sadly, you know, all the other apartments and everything around is being completely run down. But what happened 25 years ago, where we meet two superhumans, both of which are twin brothers, good versus evil, for their own battle. Uh, one is the heroic Samaritan, and the other is the villainous Nemesis. They're both being played by Sylvester Stallone. And they're about to have a huge battle somewhere in at the city's power plants, where I think they formed a mysterious plan somehow, which led to a huge fire, causes in a a huge a big explosion, which apparently killed both of them. But many people may have remained fans of the Samaritan. There are rumors that he might be still alive, somewhere. So, in the present time, we meet a 13-year-old kid named Sam Clearly, who's played by Javon Warner Walton, who's uh, trying his best to help his mother Tiffany, played by Dasha Polanco, who works as a doctor, try to save their apartment home you know, from being evicted because they were having financial crisis that's going around. Yes, it was a cure completely. You know, the economy was, was getting worse every time. So, because of that, he accepts a job from a gang that's being headed by Reza, who's played by Moses Arias, and you know, hoping that they'll he'll be able to make more money this way but the whole plan gone haywire until he ends up working with a real game leader Cyrus who's played by Hailu as back and who's very impressed about what he's doing uh, he's joining in with uh, Syl played by Sophia Tatum beautiful girl and all the rest of the games so eventually he gave uh, Sam 110, which at this rate Reza and his friends would later attack Sam as a payback, but he's being stopped by the next door neighbor who, uh, who's all alone. He's, he does work as a, um, as a garbage man, you know, but he's mostly collecting the other stuff in the garbage so that way he could fix them yeah fix all this old uh, junk antiques and everything and hopefully you know things will do for better for him and his name is Joe Smith that's you know also played by Stallone or perhaps this is his his I new identity that he has so yes he, he he basically collects garbage of all the junk that he ha finds to fix. He can even destroy it too. Um, but then we begin to find out that Joe does display super strength. So he does fight off against all these bullies. That's how Sam found out about it. So he might suspect that, yes, he might be Samaritan all this time. But he's just, just living all alone, you know, doing what he's doing best, and hoping that you know this won't happen. Hopefully, he won't make that mistake or, or so. Or he just didn't want to think about it. But he has been getting so many nightmares about what happened 25 years ago since he lost his brother. So now that's where it led to the suspicion of what was going on. Meanwhile, Cyrus have found the hammer of Nemesis um, that was somewhere at the uh, at the compound at the police station, where they just found uh, a whole bunch of uh, bombs, those grenades that they had, and I started throwing them at the cop, 
and then soon they they took all the bombs and they took out the the hammer and the suits or perhaps the mask or any other but most to be able, so now Cyrus will end up becoming nemesis so he lives and and then he ends up telling the rest of, of all the people around the town and be able to fight against a Samaritan if he's around somewhere so that's where they spark a lot of riots and chaos throughout the entire city but after Sam had confronts him about him coming back Joe denies that he might that he is Samaritan because now we begin to see the real truth about who he really is but I'm not gonna spoil that surprise so I'm going to leave it that way. Reza, on the other hand, is just looking for revenge against uh, Sam. So, But at that rate, uh, Reza eventually ran over uh, Joe. Yeah, suffered some broken bones for a while, but he soon recovers from all that strength. So, yes, now he'll be able to... Um, fight off if, if this keeps it up, but you can already tell that he's, he's getting angry and sad because of what happened. Now it's he, his entire past is going back in between him, so so now um, all the chaos was happening when when uh, Cyrus as uh, Nemesis goes around, you know, looting, committing more crime with his game, doing all this other stuff, also helping the Sam out, you know, as a family and all, just, you know, try to give him all the stuff that he has to do, you know, to earn him more money, and all that, also try to tell him to not disrespect the Cyrus, and the game, so they won't dis disrespect his family. I mean, it only gets worse when Reza found out, and then that's when Reza found out where Joe lives, because Joe eventually spotted Sam. Sam already being beat up, but it's fine. And then now it kind of leads to a lot of suspicion happening when uh, Joe defends a young girl from the explosion that's caused by Cyrus's game and rumors started to spread that Samaritan had finally came back. Uh, Sam eventually did uh, make contact with the um, the writer of his book because he works at a uh, bookstore to experience uh, the true identity about what's going on and, I mean, and the fact that he studied him and he had all this stuff that that he have laying around, that sort of thing. Um, but then there's a secret behind the fact that yes, we begin to find out the truth about what happened here and there. So Sam is already being caught by Cyrus and the rest of the gang, and that's where they head off to a big battle at this uh, rundown uh, facility. And it almost seems rather similar to what was happening 25 years ago. Because there is like a huge battle, like a big explosion was ready to, to head off. And that's where Joe ends up fighting against Cyrus. He already saved Sam. It's just, he starts to save Sam right away because he's being caught while all the flames were rushing by. I mean, he already killed all the gains around and he got the hammer, stopped them, and then and then he flashes back to what happened. And finally, he saved Sam he escaped uh, from the fire. They jump to the next building to escape out of, out of the way. And now, 
after the secrets have been revealed and on, you'll be able to change back to his old ways, so maybe things will start new again. And now, well, because already the news reports and everything that came, you know, and now they say Samaritan lives. And Sam actually revealed the truth that Joe saved his life as Samaritan. So there you go. Or what seems. <laughs> um, it actually looks um, rather decent as it turned out, but I thought this for a story that's far different from any other superhero films that we've been getting these days. Um, I guess maybe if it had maybe a much stronger impact, which I know that's what they were trying to do for this story, I think the film would still work very well. I mean, it has its issues here and there. Like, maybe it did need some improvement. I mean, I know maybe they had an offbeat or downbeat um, twist that, that really didn't think we expect this or even saw it coming, but I think maybe it needed some adjustments to what it, it seems, but all wise, um, I don't think it wasn't that bad at all. Um, I think this is a good movie. It really showed that Stallone can really do everything. I know Stallone's been going through hard times. I know he's been struggling so much, even with all the bad movies he's been doing. I mean, I know he's trying to make a great comeback no matter what he does, but he is a legend, and he's an excellent actor no matter what he plays. I mean, he'll always be remembered as Rocky and Rambo, but no matter what he does, I mean, he, he's at least he's still with us. And hopefully he'll still do maybe some more if, if that keeps it up. But otherwise, if he wants to retire, that's his choice. I mean, no one should force him into it, okay? It's just, you know, maybe everyone, any actor, no matter how old they are, you know, they, they may have suffered the consequences. But I thought he was great in this movie, at least, for playing the role as Joe, as opposed to playing the twin brothers here and there, which led to it. Um, Javon Walden is okay, wasn't bad, he can be annoying at times, but not always, but I, I can understand because, you know, it's nice to have a kid begin to look up against, uh, to look up on a superhero that he loves and he's a huge fan of, and he just, because he's already living in, in a poor town, everything isn't quite the same ever since uh, Samaritan was gone. So he's hoping maybe he'll be able to remember it by at a young age. Probably got that from his father. Eventually we learned that his father is no longer around. But he has his mom on his side even though they were struggling. Uh, the mother's alright too as that's uh, played by Dasha Polanco. Uh, the villain um, is or is okay, but not much. I mean, he's sort of resembled to uh, Michael Shannon for this actor, Palu, as back. I would say that uh, his uh, partner, who's a girl named Sil, uh, Sophia Tannum, is is very beautiful, but deadly. <laughs> Um, all the other villains are all cardboard cutouts and stuff that we get. I mean, specifically um, Reza, who Moises of um, areas and all. Yeah, he's he's just your typical you know, game that we get. Um, the special effects were well done. I mean, you see some scenes of um, 
which are all done in CGI, by the way, of uh, Joe, you know, using his super strength. I mean, he gets to crush a, a toaster and gets to throw everything around. I mean, he gets to restore his, his bones whenever he gets run over by a car. I mean, so even at his age, you know, he could still do that. You know, he can go, he can revive himself. Yeah, he can fix everything that's been broken. I mean, he gets to fight off against those bad guys. He gets to push them around. Everything that he does. I mean, I, this is just incredible how he can do all of that. You know, considering that, you know, he does look like he's homeless and all. I mean, he's, he's wearing a beanie. He's wearing a, a hoodie. And he does, you know, go around, you know, collecting all, all that garbage that he has around so he can also sell them, get some more junk, be able to fix and be able to earn more money this way. That's what he does for a living. And having to deal with his haunted past. So I think the story would have been improving even more, but it's nice to know that this was, you know, based on a graphic comic, which I... I never read. Um, it would have been nice to hear about this more. But for a standalone movie, I, I thought this was really incredible. Not only is this movie edgy, but it also has a heart and soul. And it has some nice action scenes to throw in. So at least for me, I think this is as good as it can get. It may not be R-rated material, you know, with the stronger violence, but that's okay. I mean, even if it isn't, it's still a good effort that they have to do. And yes, um, it could be very strong as well. And how how incredible the location looks, seeing how run down, dirty, filthy, poor neighborhood that we had that's portrayed in the story. So maybe it could have been better, but that's okay. At least we got something that's that's better than the Batman. I'm sorry, but I did not care for that film at all. I would say it's better than the internals I would rather watch Samaritan over internals and and the Batman any day no I, I would even rather watch this movie over Van Forstick that's for sure but I don't know that's what we go for uh, so check the movie out uh, it's available on Prime Video you know, I, I'm sure you'll enjoy it, especially if you're a huge uh, Sylvester Stallone fan. I mean, I, I always loved the actor ever since Rocky and Rambo and, and all the other films he's done, like Cobra and Demolition Man, Cliffhanger, and sometimes, you know, even Guilty Pleasures, too, like Stop and Remind Me to Shoot, or... <laughs> Uh, Oscar wasn't bad either. I, I like that one too. And even the specialists and assassins. <laughs> but of course, I do love some dramas too that he's done. I mean, I even love Copland and all that he does. So, still a terrific guy. So, anyway, that's Samaritan, and I give the movie uh, three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.